Okay, here I go doing the first line, but you keep going if you're not all the way done. x times x, x cubed, x times 2x, 2x squared, 4x. Is that the same thing you got for the first line? What happens next? Max? I got 2x squared minus 2x squared, and I got 4x minus 4x over here. And in the other one, I've got negative 3x squared plus 3x squared. And then I've got 9x minus 9x. And I'm left with x cubed minus 8 or x cubed cubed plus 27. So what does this feel kind of like? Thank you. A difference of squares, except it's not, a, it's a difference of cubes and a sum of cubes. And if you remember uh, when you, in grade 10, when you did a difference of squares, it was kind of a nice thing, right? Because you do a lot of like hard factoring in grade 10, like that, when you start factoring is so new and simple trinomials, those are easy, but comp, uh, common factoring, we give you some hard ones that can be tricky, and you mix the two together, and then you and then you do this complex trinomial factoring, and it's like, what's going on? And all of a sudden, you're in a different dimension or something, and it's really hard. And then comes difference of squares, and you're like, oh my gosh, this is so easy. Finally, a bit of relief. Difference of squares is super easy. So this is the same, but one thing that you hopefully learned is that you cannot factor a sum of squares, because it does not equal x plus 4 squared. Oh my gosh. It is not factorable. Okay. Because if you did x plus 4 squared, it would be x plus 4 times x plus 4, and there would be a middle term. So sum of squares doesn't work. But what do we notice here is a sum of cubes does. And a sum of and a difference of cubes also works. They both work. Okay. Um, and so there's a pattern here, which we'll point out when we do an example. We're going to do the general case first. If you're looking for the pattern, you'd have to look at the result that we got and go back and see like where it came from. What was special about the setup up here that caused that to happen? That's what we would have to look for. I'm not actually asking. Yeah, we'll look at that in a second. So what if we expand this? The general case. A times A squared is A cubed. A times AB is A squared B. A times B squared is AB squared. Then I move on to the negative B. Negative B times A squared is minus A squared B. Negative B times AB is minus AB squared. And look, the same thing happens where those are gone, those are gone. And I'm left with A cubed minus B cubed. So what is this? It's a formula if I use it the other direction for factoring. And, and it may not make sense. It may not be clear yet, but it will be once we do an example or two. But if you look carefully, you look at the relationship between these two terms and those two parts. So that's the cube root. And then I take that thing, right, and I square it. And I take that thing and I square it. And to find the middle term, I multiply them together. So like that's how I would use it. And then you also have to look at the pattern of the signs. Again, don't worry if you're not seeing it fully clearly yet. You will when we do an example. So that's for a difference of cubes. What about the sum of cubes? a times a squared is a cubed. a times negative ab is minus a squared b. 
plus AB squared plus A squared B minus AB squared plus B cubed. The only last thing you might want to notice is the sign here is the same and then the sign there is different. That's true for both. Sign here is the same, sign there is different. That one's always positive. This is not quite as easy as factoring a difference of squares. Once you've done a difference of squares a few times, like riding a bike, you'll never forget it. This one's a bit more of a formula. I don't know that it's intuitive or obvious, right? That that that, that is going to work out to that. I don't know that that's clear. So you so that's why I say it's like a formula. You just kind of learn the formula, learn the patterns, and then it becomes relatively easy. Let's try one. Because this is what we're actually doing. That was exploring. This is what we're actually doing. We're factoring, right? When Often when you're factoring, it's so helpful to have an idea of what your answer is going to look like. So I know this one's going to be a binomial and a trinomial. What are the two terms in the binomial? Isaac? No. That's the question. What do you mean? Abdul, what do you think? Yeah, x minus 2. There you go. You got to take the cube root of those because we're going the other direction now, right? And then to find the three terms in the next part, I square the first term. I square the last term. That one's always positive. And the middle term is the first term times the second term. So this is 2x, and it has the opposite sign, so it's plus 2x. Yes? Um, if it's supposed to be a times b, wouldn't that be negative 2x? But it's plus a times B, and it's minus B in there, so B is positive. Yeah. I always just think of it as, as the opposite sign. That's how I think of it, right? Okay, good. Is that, everybody okay with that? That's done. That's done. You could have, by the way, like we're factoring, right? So you could have factored this the other way with factor theorem. You would have needed a few ghost terms, a couple of placeholders in there, right, for the X squared and the X term, and then you would have had to go find a factor. Try one, try negative one, try two. Oh, two would work. So you you divide that out and you'd be left with this. But it's a lot faster if you recognize that it's a difference of cubes. Okay, let's try another one. This one looks suspicious, like if you were seeing this for the first time, it's part of our lesson, so it might be obvious, but if you didn't know that, there's two terms, which is unusual in the factoring we're doing these days. I see an x cubed, I see a y cubed. Tw what's 27? What's the deal with 27? It's 3 cubed, and then does anybody know what 343 is? Probably not off the top of your head, but I would check, good. I would just check on my calculator, cube root of 343 equals, it gives you 7. You're like, okay, so everything in here is a perfect cube, a cube of something. So you can factor it as a sum of cubes. you got to learn how to do that on your calculator if you don't already know. What's the other way that you could do 343 if you don't have the cube root button or something like that? Yeah, 7 times 7 times 7. But if you don't know it's 7, I don't know, try 5, try 6, then try 7 and get it. You could guess and check. But how could I put it into my calculator? 
343 to the one third, right? That's the same way the cube root of 343 is the same as 343 to the one third, right? That's something that we kind of know. Okay, let's go ahead and try that one if you want. So cube root of 27 is 3 and x, same sign, 7 y. Square the 3x, so 9x squared. Square the 7y, so 49y squared. And this one has the opposite sign, and it's 3x times 7y. That's your a times your b, so that's 21xy. And there you go. Formula. It's just a formula. But you just got to know the little parts to it, the little details. That's it. Any questions? All right, I'm going to give you two new ones. I want you to give them a try. I would imagine some people might be stuck on that x to the 6. You say, you didn't teach us a formula for that. You taught us a formula for x cubed. So what can you do with that, though? And this is where, like, if anything, folks, find a way to push yourself when you come up with something that's just a little bit new of how you can you proceed instead of just sitting there staring and saying, I'm not sure what to do with this. This would be a skill that I think you would find very useful next year, whether you go to college or university or whatever you do. But like, how could you think through this? So on the right track, at least you're close, not quite cued, but how would we figure this out? So hold on if you think you know it. I just want to think about this. What does the cube root of something mean? In other words, if I wanted to find the cube root of 27, what does it mean? Well, yeah, it's you're trying to find the number that multiplies by itself three times. So this times this times this, and it's got to all be the same. Like go back to the first sort of principles, to the basics of what an exponent means, right? And what a, what a cube root means. And so then if I replace this with x to the sixth, what goes in those brackets? times itself, times itself, times itself, to give you x to the 6. It would be x squared times x squared times x squared. So we divided the exponent by 3. It's a little bit different. The other way that you could have thought of this, although I would think this would be a little bit harder, not as many people would think about this, but remember what I just said, the cube root of this is the same as x to the 6th all to the one-third. And then I multiply the exponents, six times a third, which is two, right? Six divided by three is two. So that would give me x squared as well. So give that a try. It should say x squared. Is 729 a perfect cube? 
Everybody's done that? Yes, it's nine. Is that right? Then I square the first term. First term times the second term with a different sign. And square the second term. And we're done, right? Adam, what are you, you going to say? Sure. Yeah, we're not done because what's left can still be factored, right? So be very careful of that. This is x plus. That's our good old friend, the difference of squares. Try the next one. You can probably do the next one. It's got a little twist to it, but it's a bit easier. Not quite a difference of cubes or a sum of cubes, is it? So what do I have to do? Yeah, just common factor out the A, right? Always, 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 always common factor first. Because now that is a sum of cubes. Any questions about that? That's it for sums of cubes and difference of cubes. We're going to do one other type of question that's just a bit different. Any questions about that? It's a formula. you got to know the formula. Do not, don't you dare not memorize a formula and go into the test thinking you'll be able to figure it out. It is not obvious. You start guessing at, well, you'd have to do it the, the long way. Like, if you don't know the formula, you're going to have to do it the long way if you're asked to factor something like that, which you wouldn't really be able to do if it had other stuff in it, like Ys and that kind of thing. But Okay, one more question. Just a different kind of a question, a different way of thinking about things. Determine the equation of a quadratic function. Turns out it's important that it tells us that it's quadratic, like it's giving us a degree with integral coefficients, and that just means we don't have to worry about fractions. That has the following properties. So a big part of this, the first time you're seeing a question like this, if you've seen it before and you've practiced it, not so much. You're just like, oh, it's that type of question. But the first time you're seeing this question, uh, what info is given here? Like, what does this mean? What is it telling us about the function? How can I use it to come up with the equation of a function? Now, before we get started, again, if you had never seen a question like this before, what might you do? I think you might say to yourself, well, what does the equation of a quadratic function look like? So can somebody give me an example, specific or general, of a quadratic equation? Like, just in general, you got to kind of know what these things look like, right? So what would... What's a quadratic look like? I didn't think that would be a hard question. What do you think? Uh, a squared minus AB, or plus AB minus, or plus B 
<laughs> Are, is this what you're saying? AX squared. This isn't quite what you meant, but plus BX plus C. That's one of them, right? That's not what you were thinking at all? I was just going to say what we were doing before. Wow. Oh, I see. AX squared plus BX plus C, that's, that's standard form. Standard form is not usually very useful. Is any of that information that we're being given have anything to do with standard form? I don't know. Like, eh. What's the other form that we've talked about in this unit? No, nope, not quite. Say again? No. Uh, there could be other forms of this if you're missing the B term or something, but that's just specific, Isaac. Factored form, right? Which would be like Y equals A times X minus S1, X minus S2, something like that, right? Factored form. And that's starting to look like the family of functions questions that we saw before, where we already did these kinds of questions. But how is the information that I'm being given related to that? Isaac? What does that mean that one of the factors is x minus 4? Yeah, isn't that like, it's a factor, so I could go y equals x minus 4. Okay, what else? Why would it be x plus 3? Anybody, can anybody add to that? Remember remainder theorem and, and factor theorem, that if your remainder is zero, then it's a factor. Like, that's just a restatement of that. It's telling us in a different way that when I put, positive, when I put negative 3 in and I get zero remainder, I get zero, that means no remainder. That means it's a factor. So x plus 3. And all we're missing here is the a. And how do I find a? Well, what's the third piece of information that we're given? It's giving us a point, just like those graphs, where you would get the order and the x-intercepts from the graph, and it would give you a point, and you sub in. So this is at negative 2, negative 6. And I just sub in and solve. So in this case, a is 1, and therefore the equation is y equals just 1, x minus 4, x plus 3. That's it. So it's just, it's, it's interesting how this is all stuff that we already know. This is a, a process that we've done before, just in a different context, and we were given the information in a different way. This time being told the information like this is just different and it catches you by surprise. You don't quite understand what it's telling you. Like, what information am I being given? I understand the words, but how does this relate to what I'm supposed to do? So now you've seen an example of it. Um, and I will tell you this, that the other questions in this unit, you know the one that we solved with a system, or there's other questions where you're solving for a constant, Sometimes when they all get mixed together in a test, people confuse them. So make sure you understand the different kinds of questions. There's, a, there's sort of three, I think, that I can think of right now that are like questions that are just a little bit unusual. It's not just like factor the following. You know, it's telling you to do something specific. You got to make sure you know all of those types for the test.